What's wrong with you? Why are you not looking at me again? You're crying. Are you crying? Because the viewers are seeing the three of us together. I Muhammad. see that there's tears in your eyes. There are no tears in my eyes. What's going on? There's a slight sense of exasperation. Piers Morgan became quite frustrated during one of his recent debates. I've had some reservations about covering Piers Morgan's debates, and I'll explain more about that later. But this particular discussion gave me a reason to engage. Morgan hosted a guest, Muhammad Hijab, an author and academic, who did an impressive job of highlighting the weaknesses in these types of debates. I'll share a few clips, starting with Muhammad Hijab's critique of the other guest on the show. Alan Dershowitz. He was in Epstein's vicinity. He was in Epstein's vicinity. He had a massage in his vicinity. This is the kind of person that we're having on the show defending Israel. No one can understand it when you Have you met him, him before? Time. I know Alan well. Oh, you know him well. I respect him very much. Oh, yes, you do. He's one of America's top lawyers. His top lawyers. Yeah, uh -huh. he is. Uh -huh. And you're an unbiased person here on Central. An unbiased <laughs> person about Alan Dershowitz. Why? <laughs> Does he have leverage on you, Piers Morgan? There's no leverage on me, no. You've got a picture with Maxwell. Yes, with Gillian Maxwell. Did you go to the island? No, I've never been to the island. I've never met Jeffrey Epstein. Be honest. I never spent more than five minutes with Be Gillian honest. Maxwell. I've answered you. So what part of that was to... Do you condemn him being on the island? He's your ask, good friend. You can ask, no, ask him, him about Jeffrey Epstein. You had a massage. He represented him. He said he didn't take his shorts off. Do you know what? That's None what of this has got said. anything to do with Israel. He said he didn't take his shorts off when he was this, getting a can massage. You Please, Mohammed. Why is this uncomfortable? It's nothing to do with the debate. He didn't take his shorts off, but he's got his pants down now, hasn't he? Can you stop it? Why? This segment is quite interesting, and I've watched it a few times now. It highlights the types of guests Piers Morgan brings on to discuss the complex situation in Israel. Alan Dershowitz, one of his regular guests, is often invited to defend Israel's actions. Some might say this proves the point of those who criticize the Israeli government's actions. When you need someone like Dershowitz to publicly defend a stance, it speaks to the nature of the debate. However, it also shows that Piers Morgan's approach is largely driven by attention and engagement. At times, he will criticize the Israeli government or even Netanyahu, but he also defends them in certain situations. It feels as though Morgan takes different sides depending on what will generate the most attention. For him, it seems less about finding the truth or educating the public and more about driving clicks and engagement. By stirring up both guests, Morgan creates content that gets a lot of views. This particular video, for example, has garnered over a million views in just a few days. Let's continue watching. Iran was attacked on April the 1st. Right? It was attacked. The embassy of Iran was attacked in Syria by Israel. After that, on the first occasion, they then sent, sent missiles and drones, correct? Now, my question to you is, does Iran have a right to defend itself? And if so, what is a proportionate response? Because you see, I've been getting, I've been having a moral quandary about the issue, uh, Piers Morgan. What's a proportionate response for Iran? I'll tell you what I think about Iran. I think ah. Iran is an unbelievably nefarious place which has been fueling Hamas, the Houthis, Hezbollah Does for right many years with a, with a joint, uh, Does that have right to a joint ideology that they want to eradicate Israel uh, in any way they can. Okay. Does it have so right I, I think itself? Iran is one of the most despicable Does regimes right in the world. I also think that right now, the Iranian regime is in serious danger. You look completely of, discombobulated. Of, what do you mean? You look disheveled. I'm telling you what I think of Iran. I'm asking you, do they have a right to defend themselves? Do you, do you think they have a right to defend themselves? Both of you can answer the question. Do they have a right to defend? They were attacked. The sovereign nation was attacked. My question is, does it have a right to defend Iran themselves? has been fueling Isn't attacks the question on Israel now for what, 40 years? They're having a moral quandary. Iran oh. does not have a right to defend oh, itself. They, they do, but they're not the ones. So what is proportionate response? They're not the ones. What's the that... proportionate response? Okay. This segment really highlights the hypocrisy at the core of Piers Morgan's approach when he tries to present himself as having a moral center on these issues. His stance seems to shift depending on who he supports or doesn't, rather than maintaining a consistent viewpoint. For example, his moral concern over the immense loss of life in Gaza doesn't seem to extend to other situations where countries defend themselves. It's inconsistent and puzzling. Let's take another example. His approach to Russia and Ukraine. Notice how he speaks about that conflict in a much more straightforward way compared to how he complicates the discussion when it comes to Israel and the Palestinians. Let's continue watching. How can it be morally right to let a ruthless dictator illegally invade a sovereign 
democratic European country help himself to vast swathes of its land, murder enormous numbers of its people, and then the, you would want me to expect that the moral uh, answer to all this is to let him have his way and win. How is that morally right? It's interesting to see how clear Piers Morgan is when talking about Russia. The only reason you can tell he's referring to Putin and not Netanyahu is that he mentions Ukraine. Otherwise, you could take what he says about Russia and apply it directly to a conversation about Israel, and it would still make sense. It's wild to see the difference in his approach. When it comes to Israel, suddenly it's this big moral dilemma. Why the double standard? Is it because Israel is a Western ally? Mohammed Hijab brought up in the debate, which I didn't include since it's a long discussion, that Morgan seems to have a bias toward the West. And honestly, there's definitely something to that. Morgan is willing to play both sides when it comes to Israel, but he won't do that with Russia. Why take that approach at all? In both cases, it's pretty clear who the aggressor is. Russia in Ukraine and Israel in its actions toward Palestinians. But when it comes to Israel, Morgan frames it as a moral quandary. It seems like, at the end of the day, Morgan's focus is more on generating clicks and attention than anything else. And that's where we're heading next. Your friend Douglas Murray, I'm taking him to court. Well, good luck and, with taking on yeah. Annan on this, is all I would I'm say I'm ready for him. Oh, you, you love him, don't you? No, he's just one case. I just wonder what he has. Like, himself. I, I just wonder what leverage he has. Does he have any leverage on God, you? God, this is pathetic, man. I don't know why you keep... Why do you keep defending he's him? He's now accusing me of this story. Why are you thinking that? He's a monster. Right. This man is a monster. Well, why debate then? Because I don't mind debating monsters, just like you don't mind debating monsters. We, both, we have that in common. Do you want to finish the debate about the bigger picture or not? I'm speaking about it. You guys are the ones rattled. I'm not rattled. No one's rattled. We just think it's pathetic. You're both rattled. We think it's pathetic because you don't understand what you're talking about. Really? That's just an ass 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 assertion, really, isn't it? No, you're just trying to get your clicks on X, and that's fine. Oh, is that but what you do? You'll... Is there anything wrong with that? No, you know what? Try and debate the issue. <laughs> you, you always brag about it, my Try friend. Try and debate you the You brag issue. about it myself. You, 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 oh, we've got a million uh, views, two million views. You talk about it all the time. This brings us to the real moral dilemma. Is it even worth engaging with people like Piers Morgan, who seem more focused on sensationalism than real education? I'm talking about people who create content not to inform, but to stir up controversy and entertain. That's where my issue with covering Piers Morgan comes in. I've covered his show a few times when there's been something worth discussing, but much of what he does seems geared toward generating clicks rather than offering any real value. I have no problem with content that entertains while educating. Comedy, for example, can be a great tool for learning. But with Piers Morgan, the goal doesn't seem to be educating at all. He continues to act like these issues are up for debate when in reality, they aren't. He frames discussions as if there's an equal argument about the humanity of Palestinians, apartheid, indiscriminate bombing, or land encroachment. All of which the international community is clear on. But Morgan pretends there's a debate because that's what drives engagement. The real problem here is the dishonesty. Piers Morgan acts as though there's more to learn or debate, but it's really just a way to keep people watching. In the last clip, you'll see this in action, as Morgan is directly called out for claiming something is one-sided, when the reality is clearly more complex. Israel's never committed an atrocity ah. on that scale. Ah. On what scale? On that scale. Explain. What scale? Killing 1,200 people. They've killed 40,000! Sorry, in one day, massive. They've killed 40,000! 40, Israelis could get their Wait, hands hold on. on. Okay, I'm telling you, on the 23rd of September, Israel attacked Lebanon. How many people died? How many civilians died, according to the Lebanese health, uh, the Ministry of Health? I believe it's about 2,000 was the last recorded number I saw. No, in one day. In, on the 23rd Inclu of September. Including, including combatants, including many combatants. No, no, on, on the 23rd, how many died? Well, how, how many, many died? Why don't we have a year commemorating the 23rd of... A year commemorating the 23rd of September, since we're having a year commemorating the 7th of October, and about 600 people died, 650 people, civilians died on that day. That's quite close, isn't it? We well, don't know the civilians. They don't 8, distinguish 000? between 8, civilians and people. We're, talk, we're, we are, we're not talking about attack. We're talking about dead. Mm. What's wrong with you? Why are you not looking at me again? You're crying. Are you crying? Because the viewers are seeing the three of us together. I Muhammad. see that there's tears in your eyes. There are no tears in my eyes. What's going on? There's a slight sense of exasperation. I included that last part because not only is Piers Morgan trying to stay calm while his arguments are being completely dismantled, 
but he's also trying to maintain his composure while someone is calling out the entire debate process. Muhammad Hijab makes a great point, noting that Morgan isn't even looking at him during their debate, even though they're in the same room. Instead, Morgan is focused on the camera, clearly prioritizing the viewers at home. This really highlights that the whole debate is more about entertaining the audience than actually engaging in a meaningful discussion with the person right in front of him. Let me know what you think in the comments.